Well, good morning, church. It's Pastor Jess, and Pastor Brian and I figured that you might like to see a fresh face for a bit, and I wanted to be able to give Brian a bit of a break from being on camera. So he's been faithfully leading us in our devotions since this quarantine started, and we wanna give him the freedom to rest and be with his family. We also just wanna take a moment to say thank you for all of the time he's put into faithfully connecting with us. It's been a constant, which in this world that's ever-changing chaos right now, it's been a real comfort to our souls, so thank you. Today I wanted to launch into something a bit new. I wanted to take some time and take over even the next several days to connect with you spiritually and practically about how God is inviting us into this current situation. Now, I know for many of us, we don't feel that we were invited into this mess that we call our world right now. If I was honest, if I got an invitation to this COVID-19 party, I would send my pretend regrets and not show up to that party. It's really funny because I've been thinking about most of the time, most parties I would actually not like to go to. I'd rather stay home and watch Netflix. And now I would almost be convinced to venture out and go to a social event because I am missing people that much. This is not where any of us want to be. This is not how any of us wanted to be spending our time. And it's not how any of us pictured our reality. If you'd asked us to describe things even 90 short days ago, uh, it would be very different. If we had the ability to travel back and talk to ourselves in January and explain to our past selves the condition of our world, the condition of our hygiene, the condition of our eating habits, our church gatherings, our haircut choices, and I've seen some of your garage quarantine cuts, and I am impressed, uh, to say the least, that you tried. We would not believe that we would be living in the space that we're living right now. I have finally been able to justify the number of pairs of black leggings I own since now I'm behind on laundry and everyone only sees me from the neck up. So there is a silver lining to all of this, I guess. But something that's been looming in my mind in all of this as we've been scrambling to navigate these ever-changing dynamics is that God is not shaken. He is over it all and in it all, and he wasn't blindsided like we were. He is also not distant from us, just watching us kind of flail around or laughing at us because of our foolishness and our varied reactions to these crises that we're facing. I realize that when we're hurt, God hurts with us because he's love. And when we are in chaos, he wants to carry our burdens if we'll cast them on him. And in this time of social distancing, God is not distant. In this time of a literal isolation period, God is calling out to remind us that we are not alone. God's been really laying something on my heart and stirring my mind these last several weeks as I've paused to notice how I'm feeling in all of this. I tend to push through things. I tend to work and push and serve and read and learn and help and basically do anything but stop and reflect. And I realize that's because reflection is scary. Feelings are scary. And depending on what's bringing me anxiety or walking into these places where I don't have answers, I realize that all this is not comfortable. So I unconsciously avoid being alone with my thoughts. And I know I'm not the only one that does this. As a counselor, I can tell you that in the next few weeks, more and more mental health issues are gonna be coming to a head. There's only so much that we can hold in before it starts to boil over. And there's only so much we can compartmentalize before all the compartments start to flow together in really messy ways. We're human, and that means that we're finite, and we are limited. And those limits, they're being pushed, and they're being prodded and shattered in ways that we just don't have the tools to process right now. 
and there's a shaking, a, a leveling that's going on, and I want to get still enough with you to pay attention to that. What's been stirring me in me is this awareness of my own humanity and how it's impacting my view of God. And I want to talk about that a little bit, how God put on flesh to come and dwell among us. First John 1 14 says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We've seen his glory, the glory of his one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. And we studied that with Pastor Brian for several months this last year. But God put on flesh and he became human. He took up residence with us. He moved in and he's close and connected and with us in every sense of the word. So I want to be careful uh, not to demonize our humanity here because we may be are guilty of doing that, especially as believers, because of the role of flesh in sinfulness. And by that, I mean, we sin in the flesh. That's true. But in other words, if we are acting in the flesh, then then that's where sin comes in because we're not in the spirit. But humanity, as it was created, is not sinful. It wasn't sinful. God didn't put on sin. Um, so flesh and sin are not synonyms, right? He put on humanity or flesh and he identified with us in the most literal and embodied way possible. And in all of this now and always, Jesus is identified with us and we're identified and marked by him. So we know right now that we are missing this embodied presence of being together. For people who love to hug other people, this time in our history is torture. I'm really okay with it, but a lot of people are struggling right now. Maybe for some of us introverts, we've been preparing our whole lives for a time when everything was canceled. So we're okay. We're doing maybe a little bit better. But even at this point, like I said, I'm missing people and missing that connection. I think that this virtual world that we're living in has some amazing qualities, but it's not standing up against being together physically to gather and to sense one another and to read and intuit the energy that's coming from the spirit of each other, um, that's human. And we're missing parts of that right now. So in so many ways, we have been limited. We have been limited to screens. We've been limited to our homes. We've been limited to these essential errands, and we've even been limited in how we celebrate our weddings, our babies, our graduation, even human life ending, funerals, grieving processes have been limited. People are literally dying in the worst way I can think of, not just from COVID, but they're dying alone. And we've been limited socially financially, even in our ability to predict with any certainty what the next day is going to bring. And I know that control in so many ways is a big illusion, but right now we've lost even the illusion of control and predictability. And that's frankly really hard for some of us. It's really hard. We've been limited in our flesh and in order to protect our bodies and the bodies of the communities we love, we're staying home. And most of the limiting that's happening right now is a deep sacrificial act of love and protection. There's a limiting of our personal freedoms right now. And I think that's a giant collective act of love. But this is hard. And we all have concerns. The parallel for me in that is looking at Jesus, because he is God. And all that this entails that I couldn't even begin to describe, but he came to earth and submitted himself to limits. He submitted himself to us and to this world, to his creation and being in relationship with it. That is so humbling. He came in this great act of provision and protection and love and mercy to be with us, to die for us. And just thinking about one aspect, even thinking about gravity and adding that limitation if you're God, that is just huge. Suddenly Jesus couldn't just be. He is the great I am 
and he put himself in time and space and that limitation for us. He sacrificed for us in such profound ways, I don't even think I can wrap my head around it. And I hate this limiting just as much as anyone. It has taken a lot from me and it has made me reflect deeply about my own limits. It's made me be more honest about my needs when I cry out to God. It has made me feel my humanity now in new ways and given me greater compassion for those around me. These limits have also convicted me about how much I limit God in various ways in my mind. Believers um, all fall kind of on these spectrums of things and, and how we view God is no different. Some are on the far side and see him as fully identified with them and others struggle with that view and see God only in his holiness. And we need to understand that these two polarizing concepts are both true at the same time. Uh, Jesus isn't your homeboy or your overbearing father. This isn't flippant. He's God and he came in the flesh to be with us. He's both of those things. He's in that space of being limitless and he isn't defined by our labels. So depending on where I fall on the spectrum, I'll view certain parts of scripture different. I might take the gospel super, super seriously, but not care about the Old Testament, or I might care about pursuing holiness and have little room for grace for people that fall below God's standard. But I realize that whenever I'm landing somewhere other than right in the middle of listening and discerning the Holy Spirit, I'm getting it wrong. Because I'm limited in my own experience, in my lens, in my bias, in my own hurts and my own fears. And this keeps me from seeing what God in his love would reveal to me about himself, about others and about myself. I want to look at Ephesians 3.19. Paul is talking about the plan God has for the Gentiles or those that don't know Jesus yet. And he tells us that they will know this love that surpasses knowledge, that they may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This love that surpasses knowledge means it's a knowledge of God's love that doesn't come from my brain and my smarts and my degrees. It's a knowledge that comes from the limitless power of the spirit. The limitless power of the spirit. It comes from knowing the Holy Spirit and then it fills me up with what? The measure of all the fullness of God. And I want that to be our prayer in all of this, that we could be filled with the measure of all the fullness of God without limits. Our link question today is, for you to reflect on this a little bit and ask yourself, what could be holding you back or limiting you from being filled with the limitless fullness of God? One more time. What's holding me back or limiting me from being filled with the limitless fullness of God? And I wanna leave you with this thought as we launch into our little mini series about the limitless power of God, that God's unlimited power could be the same power of the church at this time. It should be, it can be. If we unleash it in faith, if we move together, because we already possess it, we just don't unleash it. God's unlimited power is ours. The same limitless power that we see in the beginning in Genesis 1-1, when he created the heavens and the earth, we skip over that part, but he created everything. He spoke galaxies into existence with his ultimate power. And that same power is in us. The same limitless power that we see when God creates man from the dust of the ground and he blows into his nostrils the breath of life and man becomes a human being. That power is in us. The same power that Jesus had when he climbed into humanity as a baby, that same power is in us. And the same power that mustered the strength and the submission to go to the cross and carry the sins of all humanity, that same sacrificial limitless power is in us. The same power of Romans 8, 11. I want to read this to you. 
And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. And I want us to hear that church, the same limitless power that raised Jesus from the dead and who will return one day and reign forever. That same limitless power is in you. It dwells in us if the Holy Spirit of God has been invited into our hearts to take up residence. Then he's with us. King David, who was very much human and flawed, just like me, declares in the psalm, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall I fear, church? And whom shall I be afraid? From every major crisis to all the minor annoyances that we're dealing with, God is over it all. He knows it all. And I can't wait to explore that more with you this week. So please keep tuning in when you can. I'd love to pray for you. Lord, you are a God that is limitless and a God who knows all things. Ephesians 4 tells us that there's one body and that there's one spirit and that we were called to one hope when you were called one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God and Father in all, who is over all and through all and in all. So we proclaim that right now over every circumstance and every heart today. Lord, you are over it all and you are through it all and you are in it all because you're the God without limits the God who chose to give up your throne to be with us, the God who loved us beyond all measure and beyond all comprehension, we give you thanks today. In all the ways we're suffering right now, Jesus, we still lift up our voice to you and give you praise. We won't be defeated by apathy and despair. We wanna cry out to you and praise you in the middle of all of this. When we don't see a way out, when we don't have the answers, we're going to look to you. Lord, not just for answers or certainty in our circumstances, but because you are the answer and you are the certainty. You are our Father. We proclaim that you're enough. We, we pray that our eyes and our hearts would continue to be awakened to you and that you would put us and our hearts right in the middle of your will and right in the middle of your heart, God, for the world, for the suffering, for the hurting, and that the church might be a light that reflects your infinite, limitless love. It's in Jesus' powerful name that we pray. Amen. In just a couple of moments, Daniel Ryan is going to take over our live stream and he's going to bless us with some worship songs. So please just refresh your page and gather around with your families to worship as you reflect on these things in your heart. And if you've got kiddos, please stay tuned with us. Our children's minister, Allie, is going to be on the same page right after worship. And you can please come back and join us each day at 10 a.m. for a word of challenge and encouragement. I'll be back with you this next week so Brian can have a break. I love you. I miss you. I'm praying for you. And peace be with you. Talk to you soon.